So um, I'm going to pass it to Maureen now. Hi, Maureen. Hi. Um, so my first question is, what was the scariest moment of being a stand-in during Captain America or Harry Potter? Or- scariest? Oh, well, I'm, norm- I'm normally the scariest person on set when I'm in all the makeup. Uh, so I don't tend to get scared. Everyone else tends to get scared. But, uh, I mean, it was at the, for Potter, maybe being on the hydraulic broomstick system. So I don't know if you've seen it at all. I don't know if it's in, like, the making of do- uh, documentaries on the DVDs or whatever. Um, but the, the, the broomstick flying system is about 30 foot high up in the air. You know, you start on, you, you, you climb up a little ladder and you get on it. And they have these little bucket seats that you sort of sit in and you, you strap yourself in. And then the costume will go over the top of the bucket seat so you can't see it. So it looks like you're sitting on the broom. And then it will just rise up into the air. And then they turn on the wind machines and, and then they start off. It's like, it's, it's like um, uh, being on like a, a, a buckaroo kind of horse, but not as violent. You know, those, uh, those bulls, that kind of thing. And they'll, they'll do it to the side and they'll sharp turns to the right and up and down and that kind of thing. So the first time I got on that, I'm not very good with heights. And uh, that was a little bit nerve wracking the very first time. But then as soon as it finished, I was like, well, it's great. Let's do it again. Let's go. You know. So that's probably the scary thing. But on Captain America, there wasn't really anything too scary. Um, you know, everyone was great on that. And it was, it was very technical, uh, the Captain America stuff, oh, particularly the stuff I was doing. So, yeah, that wasn't very scary at all. That's, I, I don't like heights either. So I was just picturing that like, no, good. Right. Um. <laughs> right. I mean, even though it, so, wasn't, it wasn't too high up, but you're in like a big, uh, you know, the big studio where it's just, a uh, green screen all around you so it's very sort of sparse and you know while you're up there and I'm looking down and your legs are just hanging off on this little broomstick and you're looking down again this is a little bit scary but uh, it was great fun so, I could never be a full on stuntman I could never do like the you know jumping off buildings and all that kind of stuff no way that's yeah. not for me <laughs> um, so my second question is probably around the same thing but what, what's the craziest thing you've ever had to do as a double Craziest thing. Mm. One of the, well, not so much crazy, but one of the most toughest things I have to do. There was a there was a scene in um, Order of the Phoenix, and it's um, Harry Potter and um, who's the other guy? Is it Dudley? You know, at the start of the movie where they're running away from the Dementors. Yeah. You remember that? They're running through the field. Uh, well, uh, there's a couple of shots, aerial shots, that, that, that they needed with, with some doubles. So we spent the day sort of outside running. And uh, we'd run across that field and they'd have um, a rain, rain uh, machine going. Now, for, for, rain, for rain to register on film, the drops have to be like really big for you to be able to see them. So obviously when those things hit you at some speed, you know, it can be a little bit... Yeah, it can hurt a little bit. And also when you're running as well. So I think I spent like eight or nine hours running up and down with these like raindrops just, you know, hitting you and <laughs> pounding you. And then by the end and and then after about eight hours, you get to the end and Daniel turns up and he looks at the footage and and he's like, OK, all right, Paul, how are you doing? I'm like, all right, mate. And then he'll just do it once or twice and he's done. And we go, all right, guys, see you later. You know, after we've been doing it all day and that, which is, which is quite funny. But uh, yeah, so that was uh, what was the question? Uh, the craziest thing. Crazy. Yeah, that's a little bit crazy. You know, I couldn't walk the next day. You know, those, those sort of things on a daily basis, you, you'll sort of go in and, and have to do these sort of things. Like one day it'll be the broomstick and you're flying around. The next day it'll be running. But then the following day you might be sitting around not really doing much at all. Or there's that scene with uh, Gary Oldman and um, uh, Creature, you know, when they're inside the house. Yeah. I think on that scene, um, when you see Creature, that's, that's me my body that they're actually using um, as part of the visual effect shot. And so I spent maybe, I don't know, 12 to 15 hours sort of uh, just standing there while they, you know, did the did the effects. Um, so that was a, a kind of dull day. But when you actually see it on the screen, you know, it's kind of cool seeing it with Creature in there. But when I was doing it, obviously there was nothing there, so it was just standing. So, yeah, every day differs, really. That's uh, It sounds like a very kind of diverse area of work it is um, and also it was it was very it was a very long time ago now i mean um i mean daniel was 17 when i when i first started doing it and i was early 30s or something 
I can't remember what year it came out now. Was it 2007, something like that? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I haven't really, really talked about it much since then, so I don't remember too much. So I'm trying to rack my brains to come up with uh, what happened. You know, I haven't really... That's, that's, that's really cool. Uh, my last question before I hand you over to Laurent is, what was your favourite moment in making Captain America? I think just being there and seeing, uh, well, meeting Chris, first of all, you know, in the, in the uh, pre-production stuff, and meeting the director, Joe Johnson, you know, who I loved. Um, I loved his um, film, The Rocketeer you know, which he did, which was one of my favourites. So when I heard he was directing Captain America, I thought, oh, this is great. So getting to meet him and, you know, work for him and Chris and um, the effects that people were, um, there, there were some people who worked for Industrial Light and Magic, you know, obviously did the Star Wars movies. So all these all these people that, that I sort of grew up watching the movies and loving the movies and being able to work with them was just, just amazing for me. And obviously seeing Captain America, you know, that was great. Yeah. That was great, seeing it all come to life and, yeah, because I'm a big fan, just like every everybody else. So when I'm on these sets, and I just try and enjoy it as much as I can, and just try not to take it for granted, you know, and just realise I'm very lucky in a very lucky position to be able to, you know, be asked to do these movies. Yeah, that's that's and um, so I'm gonna hand you over to Laurent. He's got a few questions okay. for you. Lovely. All right. Um, hey, Laurent, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. One of my first questions for you, Paul, is uh, what's it like for you watching films after having been a part of making them? Like, is, is the thrill still there, particularly the ones that you've been that's involved in? That's a good question. In? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, not, no, not really. It's kind of ruined it. It's kind of ruined it. I mean, acting as well, um, seeing the process of it and, and um, the methods and then, then watching people on screen. If you're an actor, you try and get lost in it like you did when you were younger you know, when you weren't an actor, but it's very hard sometimes to switch off from the technical aspects. So what I'll normally do is if there's a film I really want to see, you know, I'll go and watch it one time and, you know, I'll look at it for its technical aspects, like the, the, the cinematography or the acting or, you know, the effects or all that kind of stuff. And then I'll go and watch it again and try and lose myself in it. And most of the time I do because I've got it out of my system the first time. But, yeah, you do... Once you've looked behind the mirror, there is no really going back. It's very hard to 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 unsee it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Bit of a shame, really. I, I do I do miss that about it. I, and sometimes, you know, with friends or family, they'll they'll be watching films and the and and the way they experience it. I can see how they're experiencing it, and it's completely different. And I envy it sometimes. You know, I just think, oh, just to be just to be in that, be able to you know let go in that way. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Oh. Uh, my next question for you, I think this might be my last, I'm not sure. Um, what was the process of preparing yourself for the role of being a zombie for a, a film like World War Z? Yeah, because obviously, you know, zombies don't exist. Um, <laughs> I mean, they, they, the, the, um, uh, they had, the production had a very specific idea of what they wanted the zombies to be. Um, at first, it was they were going to go with slow zombies. And then halfway through someone I don't know who sort of decided no we don't want slow we want fast and it was like we want slow and fast so I think what ended up in the film happening was it starts off fast and then as as it gradually time goes on they start slowing down you know which I thought was kind of cool and one of the obviously the the the, the Russian scene that was removed um, showed a little bit more of that where you could actually see they they went from being like 28 days later zombies to um, you know, like Night of the Living Dead kind of zombies where they'd really gone to a crawl and they were dying off. And I thought that was a really cool concept, which I don't know if it comes across as much in the new version, as much as I did did really like it. Um, but sort of preparing for it. Um, well, they got me in to do the... Because there's a lot of CGI in it. Uh, they got me to do the CGI movement. So uh, the, there's quite a few sequences in the film where you'll see them running or jumping or just the way they move uh, that they wanted me for reference for. Um, they had an idea of, of they're sort of fast and, and phonetic, but at the same time, they've got like a cere cerebral palsy kind of um, disfigurement. So I did a lot of that um, preparing. So the, the only way I really prepared for it was just to make sure I was physically and, and to perform what they wanted me to do, you know, the positions they needed and the runs and the walks and all that kind of stuff. 
Um, but as for a mindset, I don't know. Everyone could be a zombie, can't they? You know, it's pretty <laughs> straightforward. Just want to eat brains. Yeah, well, thank you very much for answering that. And I think that's, that's all okay. I have for you now. Lovely. I think I'm gonna hand you over <laughs> All right, lovely. Thank you. I'm back. I think that's the biggest break I've ever had from talking on the podcast. Oh, the biggest what? Biggest break, because usually there's only about two or three hosts here. This is the first right. one we've had four, so right. I've had a lot. <laughs> yeah. I could have had one at that time. <laughs> yeah. So well, then, once you once you get me talking about this stuff as well, I'll start geeking out just like everyone. So you know, you got to stop me. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So yeah, we're now taking call-ins. If anyone has any questions for Paul or wants to leave any questions in the live chat, um, yeah, I think we have covered quite a lot there. So yeah, a lot of stuff there. Some very interesting stuff like that. Like, I was just listening to most of what you're saying, and I am still yeah. in shock about the eight or nine hours running, you know, the Harry and du- Dudley yeah. scene, and then, you know, yeah. Daniel only having to do it once or yeah. twice, and he's got it. That kind of sucked. I mean, we, had, we had a laugh about it, and he laughed about it, and, you know, and he's a lovely guy, you know, he, he really is. He, he's, he's one of the sweetest people I've ever met, and so down to earth, and has never been um jaded or corrupted by this you know this hollywood system and still remains just a really nice nice guy and uh so yeah so he saw the funny side i mean i won't, I won't laugh in the next day but at yeah, the time it was pretty funny <laughs> yeah uh, we do have a question for you from christian wolf jones who asks what in your opinion is the best zombie movie ever made the best zombie movie ever made mm. Dawn of the Dead, you know, the original one, the Romero, I think is the best one ever made. I don't know if it's my favourite, but I think it's the best. It's the best zombie movie. It's got everything. Um, my favourite would probably be Night of the Living Dead, you know, the one that kind of really started that whole the whole fad off. Just, just, I just love the look at it, look of it, anything about it, you know. Very nice, yeah. So I think that's all of our questions for you, Paul. It's been a pleasure having you on the podcast. Oh, it was good fun. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, hopefully we can talk to you again at some point. Yeah, maybe when Guardians comes out, I'll come back. Definitely, yeah. So we'll talk okay. to you another time then. Bye. All right, guys. See you. Bye. Yeah, so make sure, make sure to check out our YouTube channels. The podcast is www.youtube.com slash user slash everything geekcast. Mine is www.youtube.com slash user slash separatist destroyers. Mine is www.youtube.com slash user slash lazy11. The Longs is www.youtube.com slash user slash starlegend9595. Check out Graham's fanfic. It's www.wattpad.com slash user slash Graham Abner. Check out Paul Warren's website, www.paulwarren.co.uk. And check out Channel 1 on Gate where we broadcast live from www.channel1onthegate.com. So, that was a nice touch. That <laughs> wasn't for our end. <laughs> was I accidentally clicked one of my videos. <laughs> yep. So, geek set, everyone. Geronimo! Geek set! Later. Fans.